Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a full hypertrophy program that's dumbbell only based on the upper lower split. This program is designed assuming that you're training at home and that you only have access to dumbbells. Training at home is tricky because you have a limited ability to overload. And progressive overload is the most important factor for hypertrophy. So I put quite a bit of thought into this program assuming that you have limited access to equipment. There are quite a few modifications that you'll probably want to make in order to optimize this program for yourself. This program is moderate volume so well designed for an intermediate to an advanced athlete. But when you're training with limited equipment, the exercise selection actually depends a lot on your experience level. So I specifically designed this for an intermediate athlete. The tough part about training at home is making your exercises difficult enough. And this applies especially to leg and back training. If you're a beginner, you'll be able to get away with a lot of easier exercises, and you might still get a good challenge out of, say, goblet squats and dumbbell deadlifts. But for this program, I'm assuming that you need something a little bit more challenging. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that when you have a dumbbell-only program like this one, you can actually run it even if you don't have dumbbells. You can take a weighted backpack or suitcase and throw in heavy items like books or jugs of water. And most of these exercises will still work. Quick outline for today, I'm going to be giving you a full science-based hypertrophy program based on the upper lower split that's dumbbell only and suited for intermediates. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I share everything you'll need to know to run the program, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then I'll talk about weekly setup, that is where to place your workouts throughout the week. Then we'll talk about the pros and cons of the program. And lastly, I'll give you some intensity techniques to make the exercises harder if you're at home with limited equipment and you're having trouble making it challenging. If you want to see more free science-based programs like this, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's get into it. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is my four day dumbbell only upper lower program. It's using my modified upper lower split and it's set with moderate volume. That is suited well for an intermediate to an advanced athlete. We have upper body day one, lower body day one, upper body day two, and lower body day two. There are a lot of caveats to train at home with only dumbbells. So I'll mention a couple of other modifications you can make depending on your experience level as we go through. Here are the exercises and here are the sets and reps. Down here, we have the total number of sets per workout so you have an idea of workout length. And down here, we have our weekly set volumes. We've got quads, glutes and hamstrings, chest, back, side delts, biceps, triceps, and calves. As you can see, these are moderate set volumes. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend starting with fewer sets. Starting off with day one, we have dumbbell bench press. Now, as I said, this is a dumbbell only program, so you can just insert the word dumbbell in front of every exercise. We've got four sets of these for the chest, five to eight reps. After that, we have dumbbell bent rows for the back four sets of six to 10. Now note here that I will be giving you ideal rep ranges. That is the rep ranges that I would like you to use if you have access to as much weight as you want. Now this won't be feasible for a lot of people if your dumbbells don't go heavy enough. So in that case, you'll wanna increase the number of reps to make sure you get to within that one to two reps shy of failure. Remember that you can get good hypertrophy anywhere between the six to 30 rep range. But if you're going significantly beyond 30 reps, think about switching to a more difficult exercise variation or using one of the intensity techniques that we'll talk about at the end of the video. Okay, next we have dumbbell flies for the chest, four sets of 10 to 15. Next we have dumbbell pullovers, which I think are an underrated lat exercise, four sets of 10 to 15. Then we have upright rows for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12, and then dumbbell skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have dumbbell lateral raises also for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. Moving on to lower body day one, we start off with Bulgarian split squats for the quads, four sets of six to 12. After that, we have dumbbell step-ups, also for the quads, four sets of six to 12. And then walking lunges, which I'm counting for glutes and hamstrings here, so take wide steps, three sets of six to 12. Lastly, we have dumbbell RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 12. Note here that I deliberately put RDLs at the very end here. So the idea is that you wanna be using this exercise when you're more fatigued. Since the RDL is typically a very heavy movement, you want to put it later on where you can still be challenged by the dumbbells that you have. If RDLs are too easy for you with the dumbbells you have, try doing them single leg. After that, we have single leg calf raises for the calves, five sets of eight to 12. And then we have hammer curls for the biceps, two sets of eight to 12, followed by paused lateral raises, two sets of 10 to 15. Note here that when you have limited equipment, you are going to have some limited exercise selection. That is, you just won't be able to have as much variation as you would when you're in a gym. So here, for example, we are repeating our dumbbell lateral raises, but notice that I'm mixing it up by actually changing the movement a little bit by adding a pause. I'm also changing up the rep ranges in somewhat of a DUP fashion. Then we finish up with dumbbell curls for the biceps, three sets of 12 to 20. Moving on to upper body day two, we start up with dumbbell overhead press, three sets of five to eight. 
And then we have single arm dumbbell rows, four sets of eight to 12. After that, we have incline bench press for the chest, three sets of six to 10. And then seal rows for the back, four sets of 10 to 15. And I like to do these with your bench set at about 30 degrees. They're actually a very underrated chest supported row. Then we have floor presses, which I count for both the triceps and the chest, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have dumbbell upright rows again for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. Then we have incline skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And finally, dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. Notice that these upper body workouts will be well suited for antagonist supersets. So feel free to superset to save time. On these lower body days, you actually will be able to superset your lower body exercises with your upper body exercises if you wish. Moving on to lower body day two, we start off again with Bulgarian split squats, four sets of 10 to 20. Then we have dumbbell step ups again for the quads, four sets of 10 to 20. Notice here that we do have some repetition of exercises, which is hard to get around when you have limited exercise selection, but we try to make the most of it by switching up our rep ranges. After that, we have single leg RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 20. Then we have single leg hip thrusts also for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 20. It may be difficult to make these challenging if you are advanced. So if that's the case, I would just substitute them with more walking lunges. Then we have single leg calf raises for the calves, five sets of 12 to 20. Moving on, we have lying curls for the biceps, which are like an incline curl, except you lie flat on the bench, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have paused lateral raises for the side delts, two sets of 12 to 20. Lastly, we have single arm preacher curls, which you can do by setting a bench at 45 degrees, two sets of 10 to 15. Notice that we're using my modified upper lower split here. That is, we've moved our bicep training from upper body day onto lower body days, and we've split up our side delt training over all four days. This fixes a few of the disadvantages of the traditional upper lower split, which we'll talk about later. All right, now that you've seen the program, let's go over the weekly setup. So ideally, I would like the workouts set up like this. Start off with upper body day one, then rest, lower body day one, rest, upper two, lower two, and rest. The idea here is that later in the week when you have an upper lower day back to back, you usually want the upper body day to come before the lower body day because if you're really fatigued after a tough leg day, this can interfere with the productivity of your upper body day coming after, but not so much vice versa. This, however, does not apply as much in this at home type of training style. And the reason is you're not generating as much fatigue with these types of unilateral movements. Since we don't have access to heavy barbells and we're not doing heavy axial loading, say with heavy squats and deadlifts, your leg days actually aren't as fatiguing as they otherwise would be. So you do have more flexibility in this setup. And the nice thing about the upper lower split is that you can shuffle the workouts throughout the week really easily. I typically would like you to try and spread out your rest days as much as possible though, and this is for fatigue distribution. That is, we want to spread out the training stress as evenly as possible throughout the week, so we perform as optimally for every session. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this upper lower dumbbell only program. Starting off with the pros, you can use this program with minimal equipment. As you saw, you can really just do this as long as you have a bench and a weighted suitcase or backpack. Obviously having dumbbells will work better, but it's not necessary. Now, if you are going to be training at home for an extended period of time, getting a set of adjustable dumbbells is probably going to be a good bet. The weighted backpacking is fine, but you have more precise overloadability with actual dumbbells. Now, a couple of these advantages come from my modifications to the upper lower split. As you saw, I moved our bicep training onto leg days and split up our side delts across all four days. This does a couple of things to combat the disadvantages of the traditional upper lower split. First of all, you get to train your biceps and side delts when they're fresh. With the standard upper lower split, our small muscle groups like arms and side delts typically get trained at the end of the workouts when they're already fatigued by pushing and pulling movements for the chest and back. This is a problem because you won't perform as well, you won't lift as much weight for as many reps and that means you won't be producing as much volume. Volume is a major driver in hypertrophy, so you really wanna think about optimizing it across the week. And with my modified upper lower split, you're able to train your biceps and side delts when they're fresh on leg days. Next, you also get a high frequency for your bicep and side delt training. Notice that your biceps get trained indirectly through your back movements on your upper body days. So the biceps are actually getting trained four times per week. And the side delts, as we've split them up over all days, are also getting trained four times per week. These small muscle groups tend to work well with high frequencies. Another problem with the standard upper lower split is that your upper body days tend to be significantly longer than your lower body days. And this is because you just have more muscle groups to train in your upper body. Now, with my modifications to this split, we ended up moving some of our upper body work onto lower body days. So you end up having balanced workout lengths. And this allows you to give more priority to your upper body if that's your focus. Lastly, the modified upper lower split is very flexible. Since your upper and lower body days don't interfere with each other, you can shuffle them around throughout the week really easily. 
This is great for someone who doesn't have a predictable schedule. All right, now let's talk about cons of this program. First of all, your main issue is that you're gonna have a limited ability to overload. If you're training at home, you're just gonna have limited access to heavy weight. And this becomes an issue, especially when you're an advanced athlete. Now you can get around this to some extent. I'd recommend if you're getting adjustable dumbbells, try and get ones that can go really heavy. And you can always add more weight into your weighted backpack or suitcase. But this will be a limiting factor at some point depending on your experience level. The main solution to this is to choose exercise variations that make things harder. For example, instead of goblet squats, a pistol squat is a much more difficult variation. I did make an effort to try and choose exercises here that will have some opportunity for overload. That is, you should still be able to challenge yourself using higher rep ranges and some of the intensity techniques that we'll talk about in a minute. One more disadvantage of this program is that you have dumbbell resistance curves only. This isn't too big of an issue, but when you only have access to dumbbells, you do have some limitation in your exercise variety. In general, I do recommend that people try and have a mix of resistance curves in their exercise selection. For example, if you're doing bicep curls with a dumbbell, your resistance is greatest at the midpoint of the movement when your arm is at 90 degrees. This is just because of gravity. But if you're using a cable, the resistance will be more or less constant throughout the entire movement. Okay, so maybe you're finding that you're having difficulty overloading certain movements, or maybe you just don't have access to very heavy dumbbells. Here are some intensity techniques to make your exercises harder. First of all, as we mentioned, you'll wanna be pushing towards higher reps. You can get good hypertrophy pushing all the way up to about 30 reps, provided that you're going close enough to failure within a few reps. Now, my first technique to make more out of light weights is to use supersets. And that is supersetting exercises training the same muscle group. This runs contrary to what I usually recommend, which is antagonist supersets. That is where you alternate with exercises that train opposing muscle groups like biceps and triceps, for example. But here I would deliberately get you to put two or more exercises training the same muscle group back to back. Put the exercise where you're more easily challenged with the weight first, and then the exercise where you're having trouble challenging yourself second. This way you will basically pre-exhaust the muscle using that first exercise. And when you get to the second exercise, you'll still be challenged while using less weight. An example of this might be doing lunges to near failure and then immediately following those up with goblet squats. The goblet squats on their own might not have been difficult enough for you, but if you're already fatigued from those lunges, then they will. Next is to use rest, pause, or myo rep sets. These are basically the same thing where you take your first set near to failure, take a short break, say around 10 seconds, and immediately go back to using the same weight. You then follow your first set with several cluster sets where you do significantly fewer reps, but you're still going close to failure because you're already fatigued by that first set. So even if your first set took 30 reps to get you fatigued, those later sets will be a lot fewer in reps. Last technique here is blood flow restriction training. Here you basically wrap up the proximal end of your limb so that you reduce the venous blood flow coming back. This way you have more pooling of metabolites, things like lactate, which should be able to signal hypertrophy through our metabolic stress pathway. This also tends to make exercises a lot more difficult using less weight. You can use BFR to train your arms or your legs by wrapping up the proximal end of your limb, so right at the shoulder or right at the hip, and tightening it up to a point where you're getting a lot more of that pump without getting any skin discoloration or numbness or tingling. I think these are all highly underrated at-home training techniques that you should definitely try if you're having difficulty getting close to failure within a reasonable rep range. Now I will be sharing the full program as laid out in an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't already, find the link to my Facebook group in the description below, join the group, and you can download the program for free. Now, if you're running one of my programs and you want some ideas for exercise substitutions, I'd like to share with you a free chapter from my book that contains my exercise substitution list. If you want me to send you this, follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Dr. Swole, that is at dr underscore swole. DM me the words exercise selection and I'll send you the PDF for free. Now, I talked about what to do if you don't have access to dumbbells, that is using a weighted suitcase or backpack. I did do a couple of videos where I actually demonstrate some common at-home exercises that I recommend using these implements. You can check out those videos in this playlist where I go through some at-home training tips. If you got value from this video, make sure you subscribe and share this video with anyone you know who's training at home. See you next time.